Hello, 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 we are back and welcome again everyone to another session in our mobile app redesign for developer series. We are again accompanied by our awesome guest, Brandon Minnick. <laughs> Thanks for having me back again. I've got, so, I was just yeah. saying, I've got so much cool stuff to show <laughs> off because um, I know today is our, our design and our planning day, Friday is the coding day, but... I also cheat a little bit and uh, <laughs> put a bunch more coding time into it off camera. So wanted to show off kind of the fruits of our labor and uh, uh -huh. where we are now. Cause yeah, it feels like we're getting really close. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited. I feel <laughs> like this probably could be like mid December or early December. We should probably have our release. So yeah, oh, yeah. totally looking forward to that. <laughs> so what do you have for us today? Uh, what chip oh. did you get to do on the weekend? And <laughs> yeah, sure. You want to dive right into it? I've got my, uh, if you want to bring up my screen, I'm showing off my, got my iPhone plugged in here, but I figured it'd be easier oh, to yeah. share it via my screen so we can see it a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Yep. And so, um, <laughs> yeah, man. So this is, this is really cool. So there's a couple things that we've done, um, and well, specifically talked about on the show. So one of them is adding the ability to favorite a repo. So we we have that right now. We added in the official star outline SVG that we <laughs> grabbed shoot, just last week, just seven days ago on this very show. And when you tap it, then your favorite will jump to the top. And you get the little favorite tag that we also designed in the show last week. So that's uh, favorites and... We had also talked about the this button down here. So this button was the Android floating action button, like the native floating action button on Android. But, um, well, iOS doesn't have a floating action button. So in previous releases before version two um, on iOS, these numbers were still listed, but we, we tucked them behind the pull to refresh. So like you got to almost get a sneak peek at the numbers below that pull to refresh indicator on iOS. But um, when we added in this swipe ability, then things got weird, right? So when we were swiping this top repo, you could see the text behind it that was previously hidden and only allowed to be seen um, below the indicator. So what that meant was I had to hand roll or create a floating action button for iOS. So this, this functionality in the bottom, right? If you're one of our Android users, it's been there. Well, for months now on Android, but now we're bringing that to iOS. So that's new. Um, what else do we have going on here? We've got, da, 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 da. oh yeah. So obviously a big focus of these has been this trends page. And so we have the, the two dots here um, for our indicator in the middle of the screen. And you can just swipe and you get to see your star history. And there's all the work here that we've talked about where you can see we're zoomed in. Like that Y axis here is starting at uh, 530 instead of zero. And so it gives the ability for the users to zoom out back to zero if they want to see it. But also recognizing that like that's a couple years worth of data and probably data from two years ago isn't relevant for re relevant to you today. At least that's our assumption going into it. <laughs> we'll see what kind of feedback we get. But um, yeah, so we'll default to, I think either the last hundred stars or the last year, depending on if you have a hundred stars in the last year. And so that's all there now. And this is all complete with empty states. So Again, as we talked about in the show, it's super important that if there is no data to display, that we let the user know. We don't want the user to assume that the app is broken or that maybe their internet connection was bad. So uh, this was the existing one, although we did update the colors in a recent, uh, say, point release. So in the app store now, you'll see this empty state. But now we've got this empty state for um, zero stars. It says no stars yet. And then we've got a couple um, inspirational <laughs> words for the user. So like this one says, invite the community to check out your great work. 
Uh, let's see if we run it again. Yep, oh, get the same one. It's just a random number generator, so. Or no, maybe, oh no, I lied. Zero is always gonna be the same text right now, but for one star, let's see, one star. Oh wait, no, I thought it was zero stars that we rotated. Well, let's see if I tap one star again. Anyways, one star. Okay, one star is always the same. Zero is gonna be yeah. different. Zero, zero rotates, but, uh, yeah, and one star. One. Yep. Yeah, the again the idea behind one star having an an empty uh, <laughs> like it's it's empty data because the chart for one star is yeah kind of pointless. It's line. just it's just a flat line. Like you got a star <laughs> on this date, and then since then no more stars. So uh, with the idea of wanting everything to be visible and understandable at a glance, that chart didn't make sense. So um, yeah, let's see. If I should get another. Invite the community. Man. Well, maybe that's... Oh, wait. There we go. Good. No worries. Keep up the good work. The stars will come. There we go. So it's just a random number generator that pulls from, I think, three different uh, motivational messages there. But, um, but yeah. So that's really cool. That's all stuff that we designed here live on the stream. And the only couple things that I've got my eye on that we need to finish is definitely this about page. Yep. Oh. Can't even see it right now. <laughs> hey, on, let me uh, switch my theme back to default. Boop. There we go. So it's just some placeholder text. And so we'll need to flesh out this about page. And again, this is just like letting the users know that the app is totally open source. Let them know that they can open feature requests on the open source repo. They can open pull requests to the open source repo. And maybe like a little bit also about us, like who we are as the app developers, designers. Um, I don't know if we want to go as far as giving shout outs to maybe the open source contributors. Kind of got to see like how much is going to fit on the page, but I guess we could always have a scroll view. <laughs> and so, yeah, when I look at the app right now, it's that about page. And then we also talked about this preferred charts widget um, segmented control down here. This doesn't really make sense anymore because um, we have, for example, this theme picker has three options in it. Well, this preferred chart segmented control also has three options in it. So like, why do we have a picker for one thing and a segmented control for another thing? I mean, the answer is preferred charts used to be the only option here. So it made sense when it was just either connect yeah. to GitHub <laughs> and select your preferred charts. But yeah, since then we've added in like notifications, uh, light theme, dark theme, language preference. And so the other thing I want to do is um, get rid of preferred charts, segmented control, turn this into a picker so it matches everything else. Uh, we'll need an icon for that. So we'll probably need a charts SVG. Ooh, we might already have one that we use on the onboarding pages. And then, yeah, rolling that in so that just... It's just part of the settings. And I think, um, well, my biggest reason for wanting to do that is I hate the fact that about shows up at the top here. And I want that to be at the bottom because that, well, we <laughs> users read top to bottom. And so you want to have your most important options at the top. And this app is is nothing without connecting to GitHub. So that's why I think like the connect to GitHub button should be at the top. And then, yeah, followed by probably the notifications theme language, then preferred charts with its picker instead of the segmented control. And then we can put about all the way at the bottom because in, in my experience with mobile apps, I, I love including the about page. Um, but what I found uh, with users, it, the about page is usually usually something you visit once. Um, you usually don't ever go back to an about page um, unless you're just like, oh yeah, what was, in this case, like what was the link to the Git Trends GitHub repo? And then you can navigate back to it. But yeah, usually um, in apps that I've worked on and we have the analytics and we're tracking um, the user's behavior in the app, we see them visit the about page once per user. <laughs> so it doesn't have to be, the about page doesn't have to be amazing. It, and the option definitely shouldn't be listed at the top here of settings. We should drop it down to the bottom because most people only click it once. 
Yep. <laughs> I totally agree with that. So while you were uh, walking the, the attendees through everything we did last week, and I see you also define kind of uh, our plan for today. Uh, so I went ahead and, and let me share my screen here so I can show the Adobe XD project. Cool. Uh, I went ahead and... Ooh, I've also gotten to close a lot of issues in GitHub, which is really nice. So the I think the coolest thing about all this stuff that we're working on is almost none of it was our idea. Uh, <laughs> these were all like when the app first launched and yeah. like we had our big hello world moment uh, in the app stores. Uh, people came to the GitHub repo, community members came to the GitHub repo and requested these features, like the ability to uh, have a, be able to favorite a repo. Uh, that was a feature request from a user in the community. The ability to see your stars chart, that was a feature request from somebody in the community. So I, I love it. Uh, if, you're, if you're watching this and you have feature request ideas, let us know because we can get them in there. Um, and this is just really cool because, yeah, when these feature re requests came in, it was something like, oh, yeah, that is a great idea. And also, like, I would love it. So, like, I even thumbed up a bunch of these feature requests because I was like, yeah, let's let's make that happen. And yep. <laughs> and here we are, man. Like, what was that? First launched in March and now we're yeah. in November. So eight months later, we... Uh, I'd say that's a successful turnaround for a couple guys yeah. that just work on this app at nights and weekends. <laughs> like, yeah, and it's totally like free from the heart. So I think we're we're we have a good grade <laughs> because we have we released B one, right? We mm -hmm. did all that work, all the whole redesign, then we received the new features and to release like literally two, three months after we released B one version two with new complete features and redesigning them at the same time. I'd say we're in a really good path. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. Oh, I see here in the chat, uh, the user, uh, good or dead. He says, this looks so cool already. <laughs> oh, awesome. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for joining, for joining us today. I know you're one of the usuals as well. I think he was not in the last stream, but he's always also there supporting us. So yeah, welcome back. And I hope you have, you can share a bit of your ideas and, and everything we're going to do today and just let us know and we can uh, work with that in the design as well. So, yeah. so yeah, I went ahead and, um, while you were talking, uh, <laughs> I noticed we had some few points we were going to touch today. Right. So the first one we talked about was. Uh, in the settings page, we have the preferred charts uh, component. And as you said, uh, before it was a, it was okay to have it how we defined it because we go here to the settings page, as you showed. Before, if we see the, the old yeah, hi, There it UI. is. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Our old beautiful UI. <laughs> so before, it was like the centerpiece of this page, right? Mm-hmm. It was the only content, so it made sense to make a like a segmented control here, right? Because if now it was going to be too small and it was like the page was going to be empty. But now <laughs> that we have added uh, so many new options, right? And we have defined this new style to the About Us page. It kind of feels out of place in regards to the, to the overall design of the page, right? So, and, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, you yeah, know, we... Remember, we dug into the analytics. Um, pretty sure that was last week. Just yeah. kind of... Because the first question was... Um, like, we acknowledge that it doesn't fit in the UI or the, U, the UI design anymore. But yeah, the first question was, are, is anybody even using this? And surprisingly, yeah. What was it? 30% of Android users um, yeah. specified a specific preference for their charts. Yeah. <laughs> And for me, like, at least I know I have not used it, like after I tested it the first time, because I actually prefer to see everything together. But yeah, who wouldn't yeah. know that there's actually people <laughs> that are picky with their charts. So we need to leave it. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I will say, um, 
Yeah, I mean, I'm the same way. I just leave my to def to the default all. But there has been times where I will be looking at the trends page and just want to see unique visitors because there's been a couple times where like I'll get a notification that says uh, this repo is trending, and then sure enough, yeah, there's a a spike of views in the last couple of days. Awesome, but then I'll. I'll click uh, total views to get rid of it from the chart and just see unique views. And it's like two, which, <laughs> yeah. which is really cool. Cause I mean, that means I'm helping or this repo has helped somebody. So like, this is a repo that one or two people uh, are coming back to, to look at like, how did Brandon do X or how did this app accomplish this? And so, yeah, I mean, it's, they're both telling a cool story and I like to see them together, but I will say you definitely get the full picture when you can turn off um, just the total views, total clones and see unique because yeah, it tells you like maybe it's just one or two people that are possibly working on a project and they're leveraging this sample app or for something like that. Or, yeah, did like somebody post Git Trends to Reddit or did it go viral on Twitter, whatever? Because uh, then, yeah, you'll get a lot of total views and a lot of unique views. But yeah. Uh, so anyways, yeah, moral of the story, we're keeping it. <laughs> we're keeping it as an option. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me reshare my screen here. I just wanted to like reorganize them. <laughs> there you go. Cool. So... Yeah, the first thing for today will be getting rid of that <laughs> well, that preferred chart picker. Ah, so, huh? so let See you me, later. Yeah, so let me uh, duplicate here. This we'll say one, canvas, right? one nice thing, just while you're uh, yeah. putting the pieces together here, is that this control is actually a, a sync fusion control. And when we get rid of this button, we'll also be able to remove that uh, dependency, that NuGet package from the project. And you know, not that we're ever going to get away from Sync Fusion because we're using Sync Fusion for the charts, but it's always nice to have one less NuGet package to worry about, uh, one less th third-party dependency to manage. Because I don't know about you, man, but anytime I see an uh, a new NuGet package updates available. I mean, I always get really excited because it's like, it's like free stuff. Like somebody else just made this and I get it for free. Awesome. But at the same time, <laughs> definitely, maybe there's breaking changes. <laughs> and so uh, it's more about um, removing dependencies is uh, more about just being able to have that peace of mind. You have like one less possible breaking change to worry about and yeah that's that's always nice like you know me i i love deleting code <laughs> like, <laughs> less code to manage is always better yep <laughs> so let's go i have duplicated the canvases remember guys you can use the alt key in your keyboard and just like select a component in the screen press the hold the alt key and drag and that's gonna duplicate everything you have selected. And to duplicate the whole canvas, you can press here the, the name over here, and that's gonna select everything inside of that canvas. So you don't need to like do a selection like this. Uh, and then go back here. So now let's remove this, right? Goodbye. I'll keep the left side as a reference. So we're gonna, uh, basically change that for this component. Uh, and something I just noticed is that this is kind of um, not updated, right? Because in the, wait, I have the, the reference down here, sorry. Down here, let's put it on the side. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, we've, we've added a couple options. Yeah. <laughs> I guess in, in the background color too. Yeah, we added few options also the team remember this was the first draft we did for it and we just went with the icon and calling a team here oh yeah i forgot about that header it yeah. just um 
yeah it took up too much space yeah which is unfortunate because i love it mm-hmm. but we ran into uh smaller screen devices we couldn't fit the the settings it just became too busy too too big and yeah. Part of the workaround for that was like the setting page is also scrollable now because yeah after we added in a couple more options then there was it was just no way <laughs> like <laughs> it was like no way we could cram this all in and still have yeah. it like, readable clickable but we yeah tried, we tried <laughs> yeah, yeah. and then for the pickers we have uh, square, right? A rectangle here. Let's default here, and this has a further radius of four. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and I think enough. it looks just a. Uh just a little bit different on android i think they android's using square corners it's kind of like whatever the default aesthetic is for the platform yeah except i just say that because i noticed the the mock-ups have all been android mock-ups yeah (laughs) Um, (coughs) yeah i think that that should work right so now i just need to duplicate this Three more times. <laughs> uh, yeah, but without the top, the top line, right? Uh-huh. Uh, um, see. There you go. Yeah. So this is gonna get a uh, well, yeah. Because if you see the screenshot, this actually is almost like on the bottom already of the screen. So I was well. Right. The issue was that when I was duplicating it, I was like, oh my God, we're getting close to the edge, right? But yeah, that's that's how it is right now because we have so many new options. Right. And that's even, like you can see the screenshot was a iPhone 12 Pro. So that's just like yeah. <laughs> the average size screen for an iOS user. And, yeah. and so, yeah, if it's, if it's too much stuff to fit on the screen for the average iPhone, then... Nothing, nothing we can do about that except make it scrollable. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, I got this, so I'm missing one more, right? The about. About. Oh, so we can do two birds with one stone here, right? Because the about, uh, we agreed that we're going to move it from the top and put it mm-hmm. all the way in the bottom. So we say, come over here. We can take this. And I feel like I not alone. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I take away the solution and I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay, wait. Let me just select this. There you go. Nice. Nice. So now we put here about. Only about, and that should do it. Yep, and the icon. Let's search for the preferred charts icon. Uh, maybe we can use. Um, They're the all in we're the using <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. That's exactly what yeah. I was thinking. Yep. Yeah, we can reuse this one. <laughs> Free <Love> icon, <laughs> and it's already in the project. Yeah, all right, and and yeah, if you want to add in. The other icons, like um, the what for language and about, uh, those are all in the GitHub repo. So feel free uh-huh. to pull out those SVGs if you don't want to hunt them down. Cause yeah, I don't know I mean, if I could tell you where we found them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me grab them from the from the repo. Uh, so <coughs> let me first gather all of them here, and then I'll position. Let's go to the repo. Get trends. Mm. Friends. Let me put it over here so the screen can see what we're doing. So, um, 
SVGs. This is in the in the forms project, right? Yeah, the .NET standard project. There's a uh, folder in there called resources. And then in there, I think we have a folder here. called SVGs. Yeah. SVGs. And what's the name? Of it? Hey, which one are we? Using? Um, so language SVG. SVG. Language. Only language, I think. And oh, about. and about. And about. Yeah. Yeah. So the language one's called language and... Nice naming convention, see? <laughs> Thanks. We even think on that. <laughs> oh, and you'll have to jump branches. So you have to switch to the version 2 branch to get the about icon. Oh, okay. Uh, I want to download this directly. Yeah, I was just wondering how do you, how do you download the SVG directly from GitHub? I mean, I can just open the. Repo Maybe you can go, yeah. go up. <laughs> oh yeah, that works too. <laughs> uh, yeah. I already have the repo by computer. What am I doing? <laughs> uh, let's go here. Okay, source three, get out of the way. We don't need you right now. Get trends. Oh, nice. It even went to the folder I was looking for. Let's see if that's cool. No, it's not. Nah, <laughs> not. Okay, here it is. Yep. Uh, resources, SVGs. Ooh, nice. Oh, and you're on the version 2 branch, so you had the about SVG right there. Yep. Here it is. About. Nice. And language. What? What? Uh, let's see. <laughs> okay, let me open it with Illustrator. That's, that's maybe weird. I don't know. Maybe the path is weird or something. I don't know. <laughs> let's, see. let's see what Illustrator says. <laughs> I know, right? Got me nervous. I mean, it works. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah we can that. see it on the device. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder if there's like a, maybe Visual Studio is a little bit more forgiving when it comes to like a missing double quote or missing bracket. Yeah, and also maybe it could be, remember when we first started adding the SVGs to the project that we had to like configure something in the path? Like some of them were not showing up in the... Yeah, uh, yeah that was the, the color. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the color was not getting, uh, we couldn't work with the color uh, easy in that time. And it was like a configuration we had to do to the, to the path. I remember. Maybe it has yeah. to be something with that. I don't know. I will support it again. <laughs> yeah, that's how I was thinking. Maybe, Just... maybe if I copy it from here, it's already there. <laughs> Oof, nice. Oh. See? That's cool. why we always, we always have to take the lazy approach for <laughs> yeah because then i would have to export it save it somewhere oh, nice that's weird that adobe xd didn't want to open it right away yeah i wish they would tell us what was wrong with it or at least what adobe xd didn't like about it yeah i think it, it gave us like a a link to get more information i'll see if we can fix that <laughs> Like I said, it, it it works. It's not like the SVG disappears on Android or something like that. So yep, <laughs> not too concerned. And let's see the about. Okay, the about needs to be a little bit more. Uh, guys, don't get don't get panicked if you see me like not giving a specific size to the to the uh, icons. Remember uh the rule generally is 24 by 24 so what i do is i just use another one as a reference to like do it dynamically if i don't want to put the numbers uh here in the properties and there's also some icons like this one oh no look it's 24 by 24. there's some icons that have like a different scale so what i try to do with those that have uh, like different scale you can't put 24 by 24. I just try to scale them dynamic here, and then I see what is the size they have, and that's what I put in the project. So yeah, you don't need to 
like deform the the icon you can do it this way just fyi louise um yeah yep you got it <laughs> yeah yeah i saw you moving the chart icon to the language yeah you were like well, what is he doing is he <laughs> Yeah, well, I was just the uh, theme one them. could stay there. The theme oh, one yeah. is correct. Yeah, yeah. One, two, three. Here. Bam. Stay here. Okay, and now the about us. The roof. Goodbye. So now I need to fix the this. How far is it from the line? Sixteen. Oh, sixteen. Okay, seventeen, sixteen. 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 Good. Okay. pretty uh, good i guess that's how it's gonna look uh i like it it looks like like if we compare it to the old one oh, let's put the three versions here <laughs> <laughs> so this is the current one we have in the app this is what we had before this version and this is our new proposal so yeah it definitely feels more like in sync right every every component is like related to each other like we have pickers we either have pickers or we have switch or we have a navigation to another page so yeah the segmented yeah. control was literally yeah breaking this now it feels like all balance right at least that's what i think i look like <laughs> i like it i think that's the right way to go just to keep them in the order of importance because yeah, like how many times are people going to change the language? How many times are people going to change the theme? Mm. Um, but like notifications, you might like if you get a new phone, sometimes you have to toggle notifications back on for certain apps and stuff like that. So mm. like the rest of the stuff, like theme, language, preferred charts, I think that's more of like a set it and forget it. Like you look at the options once, maybe you switch the theme to dark and then you go, oh, I hate it. Back to light. And same thing yep. with language. It's like, oh, cool. They, it does support Spanish. And then you'll <laughs> stick to Spanish. But like, yeah, I don't think you change those options very often. So good to, good to keep them a little lower. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to just duplicate this to the dark team, which is now our preferred team. <laughs> Let me do that one first. So we can see have both versions here, right? There we go. I definitely have forgotten of starting to use the the colors from the assets here. Uh my bad guys. I know <laughs> I thought it was a bit a good practice. <laughs> I'll set that up off stream like when i upload the file uh, for now you can just do it quick like this select let's say the text all of the text and where's the color picker color picker there you go and select all the icons This uh, this line is kind of out of place. Yep. This line is also weird. Let's put it mm -hmm. here. There you go. Perfect. Yeah, it looks like all those new rows on the dark screen, dark theme screen, are all. A little shifted over. 
Yeah, right? It's like that's the icon's don't align. Yeah. What's happening here? Oh, okay, okay, okay. I get it. I get it. Yeah, as I say, just select it all and. Nice. Snap it. There you go. <laughs> yep. And then the only other thing I see, I'm looking at my my screen now with the dark theme, is that the arrows are the same color as the oh. SVGs. Yeah. And the pickers are um there's no background color, so the background color is transparent, so it matches the page Perfect. and the border. I think that's just yeah the border is the same oh interesting so the border is the same color as the separator lines but the separator lines are they almost look like the same color as the text like in uh at post luis that mm -hmm. text color i think that is the color we're using for the separator lines Just a guess, but they're definitely not white. <laughs> and the the text, what color is the text? Oh, that text is oh. that text matches the text color. So like, the oh. text color for theme is the same oh. text color we're using for the pickers. Yep, just like that. We have another another one of our lawyer attendees here. <laughs> Pai says saying hi. Hola. Welcome back. Welcome Good to back. see you again. Nice to see you. <laughs> Let's uh, continue co coloring this. So the text is white. Uh -huh. And this one. And the border. Nice. So we got our settings page updated now. Oh yeah, just the separator lines. I would say make the oh, yeah. the separator lines the same as your Pujols Luis text. Okay. I think that's how we're doing it. Nice. Uh, here as well in the light team too. Ooh, let me flip over to light team. Um, yeah, it looks like it. It looks like they're. It's like a shade of gray. And then, I don't think this matters too much for the mock-up, but the the separator lines start on the left side of the icon, or I guess I should use this hip. The left side of the icon and go all the way to the right side of the say picker or oh so arrow. it's like something like this yeah so just bring them out okay uh, all the way over here okay so this is root. yeah i would say if you line it up to the the pickers then that's exactly ah, where the so border this... is or i'm sorry the um this one what xamarin forms calls a picker yeah <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> so basically everything is all those icons are right justified and that separator line goes to the same point And same thing on the other side. Like they all, all the SVGs are left justified, and the picker goes to that same point, or the uh, <laughs> the separator line. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it gets confusing when you try to like name all the components. <laughs> uh, there you go. I definitely love how this uh, designing software like allows you to go like so much, like, 
zoom so much, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you want it to be like really picky and do something really pixel perfect, you can literally do it. Like go down to the pixel. Right? Yeah. It's like this separator line, I think is literally one pixel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was, this will be so hard like to manipulate if I could only go like this far, it will be a headache. It's so painful. You never know like when it's actually aligned and stuff. And these like helper lines also are really good. Mm -hmm. There you go. So is this arrow as well, like the end of the arrow aligned with the end of the lines? Yeah. So we would want to move the arrow in a little bit. Yep. It's like basically, yeah. The... Yeah. I mean, technically. It's the SVG, and the SVG's got a little padding on it. So yeah. it's not like the point of the arrow matches up perfectly to the end of the line. Yeah. There's some padding there, but whatever, there close enough. And <laughs> this one as well is a little bit more inside. No? Yeah, it should be right justified with the rest of the options. And basically that, that border of the Xamarin Forms pickers is our right justification. So everything just aligns to those. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Clean it up. Okay. Yeah, just right there is perfect. <clears throat> perfect. And this one. Yeah, so those dynamic lines that are appearing, guys. Uh, guys, it's not me. Uh, the program doesn't on its own. It's smart enough to know uh, what other components it has nearby. And if you're trying to resize this, it will try to snap uh, to those other components, right? So he he sees that you're like trying to resize the, the line. He's going to be like, oh, probably you want to put it aligned with all of these. So let me snap it to, to this position. So it helps you also to resize it uh, easily. And I think we got it. Uh, looks good. <laughs> now the other one just looks like a yeah. mess. But now that I know what it is, we can do this one first. Uh, let's go over here. Uh, ungroup this. This one. This one. This one here. Perfect. Now this one has to go there. Uh, ba -ba -ba, all the lines need to align with the icon. So we can do this. Perfect. Hmm. Now, since we have all... I have never tried this, but maybe it allows <laughs> me to resize all the lines together. So let's see. Let's Come across. on. Ooh, nice. nice. Perfect. Very nice. Yeah, I like Adobe Flash. <laughs> it's helping us. Okay. And this one. This one, like. This one is bigger, right? Yeah, just a little bit. There you go. I knew I was not going crazy. <laughs> And then the only other thing I see is the background color. So, oh yeah, instead yeah, of the white, white. The, yeah. The we, we use now. Uh, do you have the hex for that? Mm, nope. But I mean, the phone. Oh yeah. And the screenshot. Yeah, yeah. Oh. That might pick it up. S smart move. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What does Definitely. that say? F E F E. I remember it being something like that, like F1, F1, or... Uh, e, yeah, E, F, E, F, E, F. Yeah. Let me... Yeah. What was the accessibility to what you told me for zooming in? I know I oh, have it on the Mac? I just yeah. hold Control and Scroll. Yeah, Control and... Yeah, yep. I love this feature. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so that's the hex uh, we're getting. Yeah, close enough. Nice. Even if it's not. 
Oh, and then, yeah, we forgot the black one was for these. I think I can... Oh, look. Since they're the same component, you can select them all, so you can... Modify nice. all the properties together. Nice. <laughs> there you go. Um, and this is Roboto. Yeah, that's good. I think we have it perfect. Perfect. Uh, perfectly updated now. So this we can do on Friday, right? Uh, do you have any other... Let's see. A hidden arrow here that... <laughs> <laughs> good eye. <laughs> So yeah, I think this is ready now for our Friday session for us to oh, update yeah. the, the settings page and get it with its final uh, arrangement, right? Totally. Yeah, like I said, we're getting, we're getting really close. Yeah. Nice. Let me save this and let's go back to our little to-do list here. So I think we did a few of them. <laughs> <laughs> we were yeah, only going to... Yeah, we we're gonna only do the picker, but I think we did like almost a whole list. <laughs> uh, yeah, we got the icon for the charts. Uh, thank God we we did this design and we had everything available here. And we reminded ourselves that, yeah, we have a chart icon that we can reuse and that way we don't need to add another resource, right, to the project. So yeah, that's really, really nice. And let's see, so we got the icon for preferred charge, redesigned the, pref the segment control to be a picker, moved about us to the bottom. And now I think we should, what we should get into is the about us page. What do you think, Brandon? Yeah, I mean, that's basically it. I, um, how, how late are we going today? I know we started an hour later. Uh, however you want. Uh, I know we... We started, yeah, late. I don't know if, if you want to just leave it here. We do these updates on Friday. And if we get uh, free time on Friday, because I think these code updates won't be that... Uh, like, it's not going to take us two hours, I think, to update this. So maybe we can uh, group up on Friday again, code, and then do the last hour just to... To do the about us page, right? I think that sounds yeah. good. Yeah. And today I think it was a really productive day. I really liked how this turned out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the Yeah, I, th I think the order's good. The the only concern I can think of, and I would really call it a concern, is just uh thumb reachability. So if you think about the fact that most folks hold their phone like this yeah and like what can your thumb reach uh, always important to keep in mind like you don't want to have the most tapped button all the way at the top of the page and so mm -hmm. i think for this like well let's see if i actually hold the phone yeah like i can i can still tap oh you can't there it is <laughs> yeah i can still <laughs> i can still reach everything with my thumb so yeah, I think we're totally good. Um, yeah. And that's the... a good point. Like, you see how in the settings page, we have this avatar here, right? And we have the this area that is not, it's only read-only, right? So you guys can actually use this to your advantage in future apps. Take in consideration what Brandon is saying. If you have something that has to go to the screen and you know it's going to be a feature that is going to be used a lot, and but this screen only has like one or two features, well, you can use the top of the page to add something that has to do more with making the app look more stylish and like more clean. So maybe you add like a gradient background here and like a title, a fancy title, and just get rid of this extra space that's going to be hard for the <laughs> users to reach and just fill it with something nice and then put all your content after like, yeah, after like the, this, this part of the screen. Cause that helps yeah, you like to keep everything a, in a thumb bridge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think probably it, like it the totally top. was not intentional, right? <laughs> uh, I mean, it wasn't not intentional, but I mean, that's something for me, like anytime I'm using an app and 
like on iOS. Uh, I think Android does this now where you can, oh no, just boop. There we go. And so oh, it'll yeah, actually yeah. scroll the UI down. Like to me, if I have to do that in an app every time I use it, that app's broken. Yeah. Like you, you blew yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. <laughs> But yeah, uh, oh, I see a, a comment here in the chat from Questo. He says, you guys hey. are great. No, Thank you're you. great. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> you know how we always have to keep everybody happy. But yeah, uh, it's great that you're here. We're really happy that you guys are following the, the stream. Uh, we're learning. We are not designers. But yeah, little by little, we have started to gain... I would say we're at least junior level designers by now, right? <laughs> right, Brandon? <laughs> yeah, like I, like, I know a couple of things. Yeah, I can defend myself <laughs> now. <laughs> so yeah, thank you guys for coming. Um, are there any events coming up, Brandon, that, or anything we want to shout out? Oh yeah, dude. A uh, huge Xamarin conference this weekend, uh, this Saturday, is Monkey oh, Fest. Yeah, yeah so Monkey Fest that. USA. Dot com. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. I went to monkeyfeetusa.com. <laughs> Very different website. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, so it's uh, totally, totally Xamarin focused. It's all Xamarin, all days, all day Saturday. It starts at, um, I think it's 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. Oh, there it is. Monkeyfest.dev. That's the link. And... Um, yeah, so it gets started, well, early for me because I'm on the West Coast, but, oh, wait, I take it back, uh, 9.30, 9 a.m., <laughs> 9 a.m. Eastern Time, um, 6 a.m. Pacific, but there's going to be some really good talks, so uh, if you've ever seen Kim Philpotts, uh, he makes yeah. amazing, beautiful UIs, awesome. he's the first presenter, <laughs> uh, there's presentations on, uh, like, .NET 6, so Jonathan Peppers, who's one of the Android devs, will be talking about Xamarin and .NET 6. Um, let's see who else is on here. David Ort now. Maybe you yeah. heard of him. He's the Xamarin PM here at Microsoft. He's he'll be speaking at uh, a, he'll bleh, he'll be speaking about .NET Maui. Uh, Jonathan Dix, another engineer at Microsoft. Matty Lejeure, PM for Xamarin Forms. Um, yeah. Uh, just so we many amazing have, people. Michael Stotis, yeah, we, Sam, Sam Bassi. We also have Javier here, Javier Suarez, which is... Yeah, uh, Javier. Yeah, he's down in Spain, but he's also really good at creating uh, really good UI components. Have you seen all the stuff he has been doing and he's about to integrate in the community toolkit? Like he has yeah. been doing all the components from the ground up with Skia Sharp and stuff. It's really interesting stuff. Cool. Yeah, yeah that one's so... If you're asking me which ones I'm going to prioritize. Um, so no offense to Chris Miller. I'm sure the native <laughs> features Xamarin Forms is going to be awesome. Yeah. But yeah, Javier works on the Xamarin Forms team. And so I imagine, I haven't spoken to Javier about this, but I imagine what he's going to be showing off is what .NET MAUI is calling handlers. It's replacing Xamarin Forms renderers. And so if nice. you've ever had to create a custom renderer, you know how much of a pain it is, um, and they've vastly simplified it. Uh, Javier and his team has for .NET Maui, and they're calling them handlers now. Nice. And so, I'm priority prior, prioritizing this for me because someday I'm going to have to make a custom handler, just like we've had to make custom renderers. So I want to yeah. understand that. Obviously, the 12:30 event, um, Xamarin and .NET six. That's super important. Um, and then David Ortnow's session, Maddie Lejeur's session. Um, yeah. It's always good to hear, although John Dix talking at the same time as David. Ah, so Thank many good talks. Um, yeah, these are oh, all yeah. engineers. These are product managers at Microsoft. So like, it doesn't get any more real than this. Like these are the folks <laughs> who are literally building Xamarin and .NET 6, who are literally building .NET MAUI and they want to show it off to the world. So uh, always amazing. I mean, like 
and so many friends too, like Daniel Hendricks, Andres Pineda. Uh, Pineda, Pineda. Uh, yeah. Uh, I saw Michael Stonis is presenting and Sam Basu. Like, I love Rodney. all these people. Rodney. Yeah. yeah so <laughs> many amazing people. And uh, Sweeky, she's oh, yeah, presenting about uh, unit testing, which is all, always, always, always important. So I know it's going to be a jam packed Saturday morning for me because this starts at 6 a.m. my time. But yeah. Yeah, I'll have to go back and watch some of these recordings because obviously I can't watch both at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, I've heard that everything is going to be recorded and uploaded. So, yeah, we can catch up definitely because, as you said, there's some sessions I want to see both. <laughs> but I know one of them I had to see live. So uh, I'll basically do the same. Uh, reminding everybody what date is. It's this Saturday, November 21. And you can register. It's free, completely free. And you can follow all their social media to keep up to date. Uh, in that, in, in the net Dominicana, we're going to have a upcoming event. I believe it's going to be Angel talking about uh, Azure related. Uh, it's going to be an Azure related uh, topic. So stay tuned to the meetup and we're going to be publishing that through there. And Thank you all for coming today and see you on Friday. Bye.